welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video if this is your first time here welcome my love please stick around don't be a stranger and do consider subscribing if this is not your first time here you already know the drill i see you watching me watch you watch me baby so you better be subscribed honey so guys we are in vlogmas and this is not a video that i was going to upload during vlogmas i was going to start back with this series with i how i survived a marriage scam and all of that stuff i was going to start that entire series back on january 1st i wasn't going to put this in the midst of my vlogmas videos but you know things happen so i decided to keep going and continue with this um right now guys um if you are new here um my i married a scammer um and i survived a marriage scam series if you look at um the playlist on this channel um you will see all the videos related to that so you can go back and catch up but in this series what i am basically going over is how i was scammed for a green card um and how how i've lived with that pretty much um i can tell you guys a lot of the information that i have put out there so far has been strictly about my ex and in january and i'm gonna start this now but what i was going to do in january like i said i'm gonna start it now we are going to put the focus more back on the families that have been impacted by this you know the wives the husbands that could have that this could have happened to because it happens to men as well the children that live through these situations we are going to put the focus back on these families and how to get your life back and how to move on from that um guys i actually received a call on thanksgiving morning from my ex you know he called me and he threatened me and told me that if i continue to call him a scammer on youtube that he was going to fight me legally and my response to him was do what you got to do do what you have to do um i was silenced for a long time i was silenced because i was embarrassed um, I was silenced because I was hurt. I was silenced because I didn't know how people would reply. I was silenced because, just to be honest, I was so afraid. And I'm not going to be silenced anymore. I am going to continue to speak my truth for whoever needs it. And that is so many reasons why people live through situations like this and they just hold it because they're afraid you know they, they are bullied into silence by the person who did it to them and then they're embarrassed and then they're afraid um so that's why you have so many people who don't discuss it and i'm gonna just be honest with you guys i know i've probably said it before in other videos that entire relationship living through that entire process guys when i tell you that thing almost took me out of here and now that i am at a point in my life where i can openly talk about it without breaking down and crying and without being embarrassed about it or caring about who has an opinion about whatever i'm never going to be silenced again i am never going to be silenced again to tell you the truth i would welcome sitting in a courtroom where he attempts to try to do anything legally to me because of what he did to me and my children. I would love to hear him explain that with all of the information that I have. I mean, there are even people that are connected to him that are willing to testify against him based on what they know he did. I would love 
to hear him that that may help with some more of my healing process so i would love that because i'm never going to be quiet about it i am going to scream it well not scream because I, I don't do a lot of screaming but like but you but you understand what i say when i mean i am going to scream it at the top of the mountaintops the rooftops whatever so let me um talk to you guys about a few things because this situation doesn't only happen to women, it happens to men as well. And it doesn't just happen to American women or European women. You know, it also happens to other African women. Um, I've been sent information from videos and I'm gonna give you guys some of that information before I, before I leave this video but i've been sent information from some of you guys um quite a bit of information um there's actually one of you guys who sent me another youtuber's channel and she's a, a african lady she's a south african and her channel is solely exist to discuss this you know she is south african um the person who scammed her, she actually sued him and got all her money back. She didn't marry him, but she does have guests and speak to other women who are African, um, who have married Africans from another part of the African continent and were scammed for money and, you know, just drained, just drained because it's all the money thing. But I'm gonna give y'all all of that information uh, a little later, but um, it, not only happens to American women or European women, it happens to African women as well. Um, and it happens to African women being scammed by other African men, you know, men from Nigeria, men from Uganda. Um, so, and you guys will see it, you guys will see it. Some, um, you know, happening with you know them being scammed from men from their same continent but um I'll, i like i said i'm gonna put that video i mean that information i'm gonna discuss that more at the end of the video but right now i want to discuss with you guys how you have to fight for your sanity and for your life back you know you can't keep using what happened as an excuse and keep giving them so much power over you and what happens to you and what happens to your children and your relationships and just your overall happiness guys you know with me i've been very transparent you know with my healing process and how making youtube videos and journaling and going to therapy helped me tremendously you know that youtube and that journaling and that therapy that was my outlet that was my outlet and some people didn't get it um y'all know i'm very transparent um my mother um two of my mother um other children my older sister and my older brother I lost my relationship with them because of this um, and I and you know what and I won't say I lost it with them because of this because I became so public about it because I just had to be honest in the get-go um, the bond wasn't what it should have been anyway so when I and if you've been here with me you already know so I don't even have to go back into that rabbit hole you already know if you haven't you know, if you haven't been here with me, I explained it some on my story time. Go watch that video. You know, go watch those. But, so I'm not going to get into that rabbit hole on this video. Um, I've already discussed that. But, um, I became very public um, when I just couldn't take it anymore. You know, so many things were being said about me and I just had endured so much that it was like I was exploding and you can only poke at someone so much before they explode. 
So, um, when I went on Facebook Live and I had a very public conversation on Facebook Live about my older sister, um, I had family members that didn't like it. Um, but those who were honest, they agreed with me. <laughs> they agreed with me. Um, I had older aunts that agreed with me when I talked about it to them. Older cousins that agreed with me, you know, when I talked about it to them. Um, so they knew because they know my sister. And they know the type of person she is. And her entire life, she's been doing nothing but stabbing family members in the back over and over again especially female family members and their significant others um it's like when she sees even if you're not happy if you're putting that facade out there she sees it and she wants it because she doesn't have it she wants everything that everyone else has and she doesn't care what trying to get that does to you you know she doesn't care about you know any of the lies or whatever that's that's why her and my ex clicked so fast but um but anyway when i went live with that video my brother had an issue with it um of course my sister had an issue with it you know but they had issues with it um i had other family members like i said that spoke to me about it um and whatever and not only you know did my brother have issues with it they he, you know he has friends that had issues with it you know very close friends to the family and their issue was I told everybody what she had done um, what bothered me about it is none of them asked me how I was with the situation if I was okay if my children was okay they all tried to make me feel like I had done something wrong even though they know her and they know that she has has done nothing but fucked up things to our family members for as far back as we can remember but they just condone it but I was the first and only one to call her out on it so there I was and I know this is where this is going to resonate with a lot of you guys there I was feeling bad for calling her out and apologizing to them for what was done to me for what i lived through and i know some of you guys are doing that and the first thing that i'm gonna tell you guys stop doing that stop doing that i had to realize that i didn't do anything wrong my family knows me they know how i was always ride or die right along for my older sister so they knew if I ever said anything against her, that it was the truth and that it was warranted. So, um, so the majority of my family, none of them had an issue with it. But, you know, my brother did, you know, he made it seem like it was such a huge deal. You know, he's in tears because he's looking online and seeing me say blah, 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 blah. So that relationship that wasn't even there anyway, it just, and I had to catch myself guys, because I'm like, you are calling and apologizing and checking up on and doing all these things for people who have never done that for you. Every time you speak, you're reaching out, you know. If there's a text message, you're initiating it. If there's a call, you're initiating it. If there's a visit, you're getting in your vehicle going to go see them. And I had to stop doing that. Because in my healing process, I had to realize that either they are with me and they love me or they're not. And they don't. And people can say a lot of things, but their actions will show you. So, you know, with my sister, I haven't spoke to her in what, three years maybe? Two, almost three years. And I can tell you, I don't miss it. 
at all. Because I just had to come to that realization that in order for me to continue in my healing process, I got to look out for me first. I have to look out for Constance. And whatever is there that's not working, it has to be removed. When I look at the relationship, like I said, I was always the one giving. You know, it's like I was, you know, I'm the youngest, but I'm the one who was always giving, the one who was always rescuing, the one who was always there for everybody. And nobody was there for me. Nobody. When I needed, because I have other family, I do. But when I went through this situation, I wanted my closest family. I couldn't call on my sister. And then, you know, my brother was then he was upset. And then to realize that he was still having conversations with my ex. And then I had to realize that's a relationship you got to cut off at the head to Constance. Because there is no way that someone who, you know, would have done that to your brother and they would still have access to you. There is no way. There is no way. There is no way. There are girlfriends that my brother had when we were kids that he broke it off with. That I really, you know, I really liked the girls. However, my brother wasn't cool with you. I haven't spoke to him since. <laughs> but that's just me. But you can't expect people to always be like you are. So like, and so like now when y'all hear me saying anything about my brother, my brother, I'm not talking about my biological brother. I am talking about people, you know, someone very close to me that God has put in my life who actually treats me like I'm their sister. Um, so if y'all ever hear me saying my brother, I'm definitely not talking about my, my biological brother. I haven't had a conversation with him. Um, it's probably been close to a year and I will not initiate one. The last conversation we, the last probably 10 to 20 conversations we had, I initiated them all. The last 10 to 20 times we saw one another. It was me getting in my vehicle, driving down. Even though he has gotten in his vehicle and drove past here, gotten on an airplane and went to visit to see people, I live an hour away, hour and a half away. You know? So I can't extend myself for people who don't extend their self for me and sometimes you know with those relationships they will hurt but God will put people in your life who are supposed to be there and the thing that really um gets me sometimes guys is that it's always your blood that treats you worse I have family member. I mean, I have friends that I've met throughout the years who have treated me better than my family has ever treated me. And I'm thankful for that. And you know what? And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the relationships that I have. So guys, when you are going through your healing process and getting your life back and getting back on track after going through a situation like this, you have to look at who you have around you. And if you have people around you who turn their back on you when you needed them um, and talked about you and talked down to you and made you feel like you were beneath them and just, and just scum because you were trying to get out what you were going to, what you were going through and they didn't, and they didn't make it a safe place for you in your healing journey of becoming whole again and becoming you again, you need to step away from that. You know, it wasn't difficult for me to step away from those relationships. It wasn't. You would think it is because it's my biological brother, my biological sister. We have the same mother. So you would think it would be difficult, but it wasn't. It wasn't. I just look at 
the relationship and I look at how we grew up and I look at how my father was the only one there and I just look at so many things and I just have to put so many things into perspective you know with why the relationships were the way they were because they weren't right when we were children and I just had to stop lying about it and be honest about it and it's okay and it's okay and I became okay with that because I'm happy now I can sleep at night and I don't have a bunch of dead weight and fakeness around me and I'm okay with that and you guys need to get that way because in your healing process you're, you're going to see and it's going to be family members who treat you the worst and I don't want to see not one comment under this video oh Constance I'm so sorry because I'm not and I don't want to receive one email I'm so sorry because I'm not don't be sorry for me because I'm at a place where I'm okay be sorry for those and put those prayers for those and you know link resources down below for those who are still living through it who you may think see this video because guys my videos reach so many people that you guys realize like when i look at my views on youtube youtube shows you who views your videos and who share them and if they're shared what platform they're shared to and how many times they're shared there my all of my videos in this series they're at least shared 50 to 60 times from here and then they're shared to other platforms and from those other platforms they're shared from to other platforms so my videos reach a lot of people so I get a lot of emails and people get it and they understand the people who have lived through it they get it and they understand so don't at one point in your life say that you are sorry for me because I have gotten to that point where I am okay I can finally say that I'm okay but let's talk about how I got there other than cutting ties with two of the people who were supposed to be the closest to me you know when our mother passed away and our grandmother passed away we were all we had you know we were all we had it was just supposed to be us we were all we had we were all we had and even though i would have never done anything to hurt them that's not how they felt about me and it's okay it is okay i have come to that realization and that's just what it is that's why i do so many things to make sure the relationship with my, you know, between my children is what it is. And it will be, and they will maintain that bond, you know, years after I'm already gone. It will always be them above everybody. They will always choose each other. Because I've seen a lot of things that, you know, when we were growing up, and I'm, I'm never going to down talk my parents, downplay my parents because, you know, parents do the best they can with what they know how to do with how they were parented. But I see some things that could have been done differently, you know, by my parents when we were growing up. And I try to make sure I'm doing those things with my children so those relationships would be what they are. You know, so I try to make sure I do that. But like I said, let's talk about how I became okay. You know, I had to cut those relationships. And then, let me talk up to you guys about something that I did that I really didn't discuss a whole lot. Other than YouTube videos and journaling, I made videos to me. Um... Because it's just something about me that I'm very comfortable with picking up my camera, putting it in my face, and pouring my heart out. I'm comfortable with that. But I made videos up until now that were for, that were for no one's eyes but mine. Um, and one thing that I prayed when it came to my journaling and when it came to my videos is for God to get me at a point to where I can watch that stuff back. I can process it and I can be okay with it and, and because I realized what happened. Um, 
one of the first videos that I made um, <clears throat> was the night that me and my ex split up. Because all the videos that I, you know, that I made, I was just documenting how I was feeling at the time. And when I started, you know, my playback, well, let me go back, let me go back before I jump too far ahead. But one of those videos that I watched here recently, you know, was the night that me and my ex split up. And in that video, I was trying to process how I was feeling, but I was so overcome with emotion because I had been done wrong. I had been cheated on. I had been married to someone. And like I said, at that point, guys, you know, when we first split up, I didn't know that he had done all that he had done. But at that point, you know, he had went, stayed out all night, was in Raleigh with who he was with. And, um, wouldn't answer my calls and came home. I mean, he left the day previously, like in the afternoon, didn't come back to like one, two o'clock the following day in the afternoon. So he was gone. He was gone, gone. So, but when he came back, very disrespectful. And I was just processing how I was feeling and then tried to validate. You know, I saw myself on the video trying to validate him um and try to reason with how he can leave and be gone and be with someone else um i'm calling he won't pick up but he'll pick up if anyone else call him but he won't pick up for me um and but i'm trying to validate and pretty much making myself the blame for his behavior. Looking at, oh Constance, you did this, you did this, blaming myself. And when I look back at that very first video, you know, I could look at that and I could be honest with myself and talk through that. Okay, Constance, this is what happened because at that point you were emotional and it was still in your brain that this was your husband he loves you. You didn't know what he had done at the time. This was your husband. He loves you. It's your fault this is happening. When it wasn't. When it wasn't. Because he never wanted to be there in the beginning. But like, I told my therapist that I had been doing these videos. And I went through the first four that I did with her. And I'm going to tell y'all guys, it was a lot of heavy stuff. I don't know if I would ever post those videos on YouTube um, but I needed that for my healing process and I'm glad I did those videos and not just did my journaling because for me to be able to look at a physical screen a computer screen and see a video that I made and see me and see the state I was in and see the hurt in my eyes and in my voice and just see where I was physically and see where my mental health was. Just to look at that and see where I was and to see where I am now and to be able to actually talk through it and process it. You know, um, that's helping me. And like I said, guys, you know, in one of my last videos, I survived it. I lived through it. I'm still surviving it. I'm still living through it because I have to also look at what triggered me to feel and have certain emotions about certain things. I know people, so many people call me crazy, guys. That house was only $150,000, my house that I sold. This house cost double that. This house was $325,000. You know, I got rid of Y'all yeah, know how I be talking, but a lot of people didn't don't understand it. I'm going to break that down to you guys. Like I said, that house was $150,000. This house, <laughs> $325,000. 
So people didn't understand how I would get rid of a home that was only $150,000, buy a home that was double the price of it, more than double the price of it, get rid of everything that I had pretty much when I was in there if it didn't belong to my parents, rebuy everything. I've even repurchased some of the same things. You know guys, like these. I purchased these from Kirkland's, well not, well pretty much these. I purchased these from Kirkland's um, the year that I brought my ex here. The set that I purchased, I threw that set away and purchased this new set not too long after I realized who my ex was. And let me explain to you guys why I was throwing some things away and repurchasing the same things because so many people thought I was crazy. Um, I am a true believer in energy in a place and transfer of energy and spirits and just things not having a good vibe and a good feeling. And there were certain things in my house that I love. Some of the pots that I had, I threw more and purchased the same exact pots. Um, but I didn't want to be in that home. I didn't care how much the new home was going to cost me. I needed to continue healing. I needed my peace. I needed to be able to sleep at night. So I needed to leave. I need to be able to walk in my house and see an object that I purchased and have memories from that object that are positive memories. And it doesn't matter if it looks exactly the same. It's not. The only memories I have from this is when me and Jayla and Nadia and went back into Kirkland's and they still had it and my baby said, look Ma, you threw the other ones away. But they have those and it's the same thing. Why don't you get those? My memories with this, even though it was the same thing, my memories with this started over. All the energy on this is good energy. It was only touched by me and my children. So, that works for me. That helps me maintain my healing. Um, and it doesn't have to make sense to anyone else. When you're in your process, guys, your process is your process. It doesn't have to make sense to no one but you. Do what works for you. When me and my therapist was going through those videos, and we were watching them back because it was some stuff that I was discussing in those videos that I couldn't even discuss with her yet because it was too heavy for me to say it out loud to anyone else. Or I was too embarrassed to say it out loud to anyone else because I was so worried about the judgment because society is just, you know, so judgmental of everything. Everyone has an opinion, but no one has a solution, right? So when we were going through those things, um, and I'm just able to just process it and go through it and, and, and talk about it and acknowledge it for what it is and just be okay with that, you know, just be okay. Because I realized that if I wasn't okay, that I was not taking my power back and I was giving it to someone else. And I'm never going to allow someone else to have my power. And also in taking my power back, guys, like, let me talk about, and he'll probably be in one of my videos here soon. I'll let y'all see my honey. But our relationship spans back 22 years. 22 years. Um... We met at Livingstone College. That's my alma mater. That's why I went to undergrad. Undergrad. That's why I received my undergraduate degree from. That's why I earned my undergraduate degree. Um, 
And you know how when you meet someone, you have feelings for them, they have feelings for you. But he was dating somebody, I was dating somebody. The funny thing about it, he was actually dating one of my sorority sisters, um, which is crazy. But um, we weren't sorority sisters at the time um, because neither one of us were in the sorority. No, that's a lie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was dating one of my sorority sisters. We were in the sorority at the time. I don't know if when they start dating, if we were sorors at the, at that point, but he was dating one of my sorority sisters and I start dealing with my older kids' father. Um, and him and my older kids' fathers, they both are in fraternities. They're in different fraternities, but they were really, really, really good friends. <laughs> So, you know, life happens. You know, I stayed here in North Carolina and he went to um, another state. And when we reconnected, we reconnected shortly after I realized what my ex had done. And let me tell y'all, you know, how, how God works. At that point, I wasn't looking for anything, guys. Um, other than a friend. Um, so, and he's always been very easy and comfortable for me to talk to. Um, because up until like that whole relationship, and people always think, because I, I always look at like having an intimate relationship with someone, meaning, you know, you get to know them, who they are, and not sexual because we didn't have this whole 20 plus years that we've known each other for 19, over 19 of those years, our relationship wasn't sexual. There was no, that wasn't that part of it, but, you know, we know each other, you know, if that makes sense. So just having that friend and that support and being able to, you know, be me with no judgment, um, have a relationship with someone that doesn't want or need anything from you. The only thing that they want is for you to be happy and healthy. So... You guys, with, with him, it was just, it was just easy. And then even with us reconnecting, I, I dated people in that time. I had my little host stage in that time where I had sex with other people. It, it is what it is. And he knows because I told him, you know, he dated other women. He had sex with other women. I mean, our relationship is so open. We've talked about everything. I've called him and be like, man, listen, I don't waste my time. That dude had, well, that's too much information. I ain't gonna tell you what I told him about some things. But just to be at a point where I can just be open to love and open to an intimate relationship and let that grow. You know, let that, you know, relationship grow into a stronger friendship with one another. A stronger friendship between me, him, and God. A stronger friendship between me, him, and my children. A stronger friendship between you know, him and my children, because to actually know that he's someone that my children love and respect and are happy that I'm with means everything um, to me. It means everything. Um, and they are very vocal. Y'all well, y'all know my kids. Y'all y'all know Cammy, Angel, and Ali. Y'all know them three. They are very vocal about how they feel about things and what's good for me, what they feel that's good and what's not. And for my kids to look at me and say, we see you smile without forcing it. <laughs> you know, we see you happy without pretending that you're happy, actually being happy with someone. Um, and that means, that means a lot. So give yourselves that opportunity to be like that with someone else. Um, don't just close yourself off and say, 
this thing happened to me, this thing happened to my children. I don't deserve anything else because you do. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to have healthy, happy relationships. So you have to do whatever is necessary to make you happy. And don't be afraid to. You know, I tell people, because a lot of people are trying to say, well, um, what's the difference between, you know, you breaking up with, you know, your older kid's father and your ex. First of all, my old kid's father, didn't. the treatment was totally different. I have never been treated so poorly or disrespected like that by anyone in my life. I <laughs> never. So it's different. It's very different. Every woman that I've talked to and male that I've talked to, it's different. You know, it's different. And I've even had um, some of my Nigerian friends and guys, I've, I've never really said much about this because I don't know what I believe when it comes to this yet. But I just know when me and my ex was together living under the same roof, it was so, it was like it was so difficult for me to just pull away and just be like enough is enough. It's like my brain was telling me, you gotta get out of here, you gotta get out of here, you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go. But I just couldn't, it's like, it's just, it's just like something was on me that was keeping me there and it's hard to explain. But I have Nigerian friends who they, they, they were convinced that it was some type of root working and all that stuff. I, they they're convinced. I can't tell you that that culture is really big on that, but they were so convinced. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I know a Liberian church that I used to go to. The pastor said that to me as well. That he felt like um, my ex had put some type of whatever on me. I don't know. Um, I'm not gonna say that because I don't have any you know, hard, 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 concrete proof of that. But I've had a lot of Africans tell me that. And one thing that I can tell you guys is, and I want you guys to watch it on her channel. And I'm gonna link, and I, I may put a card up above, but I'm gonna link her channel below. Her name is Boldly Owami, or Owame. Um, I'm probably not saying her name right. I don't mean no disrespect at all. Um, because there's more than one name, more than one way that you can pronounce her name based on how it's spelled. But I think it's Owami. Um, she's South African. She has a YouTube channel. She was scammed, um, like I was telling you guys a little bit earlier. But she was able to sue him and get her money back plus more money. Um, thank God she didn't marry him. But her channel is just dedicated to like those romance scams. It's just, and it's and it's good to hear. It. Well, it's not good because it's not something that you should be listening to. But to hear it from an African and to hear it from you know, well, I'm not gonna say it because I don't want to sound disrespectful. But to hear it from an African woman who is South African, um, you know, I'm an American woman. I grew up in the United States of America. But to hear it from a woman who is in South Africa, who was, and I think the guy who did her, um, I think he's you you from Uganda. I don't want to misstep. I don't want to misstep because I watched all her videos and they're just probably playing together in my head. But to hear how heavy, you know, they believe in things, you know, with the ancestors and with, um, spirits and 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 roots and just a lot of stuff um i'm gonna link her channel below guys go and watch and see what these ladies these these beautiful ladies that um not only herself but what she has been able to connect it to go watch and see what these ladies have lived through and you know one thing that a society that the society has to step away from is making 
the women the fault here. Um, because all these women, you know, society made them feel like, you know, it was their fault. Um, like I told you guys, it, this whole relationship almost, it almost took me out. And one of the main reasons why is because what I dealt with from people, um, it was just what I dealt with from people. The shame, you know, people talking about you, people turning their backs on you. That's that was a lot to deal with. That was a lot to deal with. And then all the emotional stuff from my ex. Um, and to see another woman who is on YouTube and reaching out to other women, you know, the way that I have and really putting everything out there on the table and not being afraid to speak her truth and these women are not being afraid to use their voices these things are not going to stop happening until we speak up and stop being afraid to speak up and stop being you know stop allowing ourselves to be bullied and to be silenced you know you have to speak up about it um you know one of her latest videos you know she was offered you know she discussed how she was offered money to take her videos down they don't want this information out here and it's not a lie it's happening it's happening um and they plan these things in her video she's you know she's going to discuss how a group of women who work for a certain company how they are targeted to be scammed for their pensions by other African men. So it's it's not like it's something that is made up. It's happening. And it's not just happening to American women. It's happening to all women. You know? And then they're bullied into silence and they don't speak about it. And they suffer. They suffer. You guys, you know, ladies, put your big girl panties on and speak your truth. Because it's not going to get better and it's not going to stop until you speak your truth. You have to speak your truth and you have to call everybody out on their bullshit. You have to call them out. It doesn't matter who it is. Because if they condone it and saying they condone it, I'm saying if they are upset with you for speaking on it, they condone it. And that's how I looked at those relationships with, you know, with my family members that I don't fool with. You're upset with me for speaking on it, so that means you condone it. And if you condone it, then I can't fool with you. You have to call it out. You have to stand tall. And you have to move on. And allow yourself to heal because when you keep that stuff in, it just eats at you. And it's going to kill you. It's going to have you out here looking old, feeling old. And it is going to kill you dead. And I have so much more life left in me. I would never let what happened to me stop me. I won't. And I, like I said, I'm never going to be quiet about it. I'm always going to speak up about it. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to speak up about it. And I know I say ladies more because it happens to women a whole lot more. You have to speak up about it. You can't be bullied into silence. But I want y'all to go over and watch her videos and just see. Just see. Because she touched on so many things that she know that I didn't grow up, experience that stuff and seeing it firsthand. I can't speak about the ancestors and the spirits and how those spirits have a hold on you because I didn't grow up experiencing that. You know, I know that stuff is in the American culture, but it's in the African culture, even though I'm African American, but it's in that culture, the complete African culture, a whole lot more. So I can't, I can't speak on it, but I know what I felt. I know what I felt was over me. And I couldn't, it's like I couldn't break away from it, but I can't speak on it. And I can't tell y'all that there's something that my ex did to me. Because I, I, I don't know, I don't know. But I can tell you 
she can speak on it. The ladies that are telling their stories with her, they can speak on it. Because they experienced it and they can speak on it with, with first hand knowledge because they know. They know. But when you listen to the things that happen, they're all similar. You know, we're, we're all women and not, oh, let me not say that, but like I said, we're all women and we're all some form of woman of color that is happening to the most. We're, we're all some form of woman of, we're, we're all a form of a woman of color that is happening to, but guys, you, you just, and I know this video, it was just a lot of talking, uh, but in that talking, I want you guys to really focus on you and what that healing journey looks like for you. What do you have to do to get there? And I want you to, if you don't take anything else away from this video, take away the fact that I need you to stop making it about them. The situation is over. Stop making it about them and make it about you and what you need in your healing journey. And that's what you work towards. You know, there is nothing else I need to put out there about my ex. You know, there are many videos and many recordings that I can put out there. But the world already knows who he is. It's more important for me to put information out there to let people know how they need to survive afterward. You know, how do you survive afterwards? How do you pull yourself up? afterwards how do you keep going afterwards and i can tell you it starts by putting one foot on the floor at a time every day and if you pray get down on your knees multiple times a day every day that's where it started that's where it started for me so do what whatever works for you if you need to make videos, if you need a journal, you know, if you need to, you know, write things down and, and rip it up. A lot of people do that. But whatever it starts for you, that's healthy, a healthy release. Whatever it's going to be for you, you have to do that, guys. And it needs to be about you, not about them. Because I don't need to make anything else about him. The world knows. The world knows. I've done my job there. Now my job going forward needs to be about us, about me, about the ladies and gentlemen watching this video who has lived through it, about them, you know, about you guys. How do we move forward? How do we move forward? One step forward. And you gonna have days where, you know, you feel like you took one step forward and 25 back, I have. But you have to keep going and you have to figure out, ask yourself and be honest with yourself. What is stopping me from moving forward? What's blocking me? And it may be who's blocking me. How is it blocking me? It could be places that are blocking you. Music that blocks you. It could be certain objects that block you. Whatever that blockage is, and you know what it is. You know when you were around certain things or you were at certain places or you're around certain people and you hear certain things or you smell certain things and eat certain things or touch certain things or wear certain things, you know how your mood changes. You need to remove that. Remove it and see how that aids in increasing your healing process and speeding up that healing process. Make it about you. Make it about you. And stop giving people who shouldn't have access to you access to you. I've had my same phone number well before I even knew my ex. And I've had, you know, people tell me, change your phone number, change your phone number, change your phone number. And I was making so many excuses. I got so many business contacts with this phone. Blah, 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 blah. The contacts that you need to be in contact with it's a quick email this is my new contact information you know 
a number that I had for years. I got rid of it a few days ago. I changed my phone number a few days ago. You know, you have to do things to cut off all access. Cut it off for you and stop making excuses. You know, if you're married to them, get them last names back. Get them back. My last name is no longer Ibuma Legally. Give it back. Why do you want it? Heal for you. My last name is not, it's also not what it was before I married him. I changed it to something else. But, give it back. Why do you want that name? Why do you want to carry that? That's just a reminder. Why do you want to be contacted in any way by that person? Why? So, you have to do your part to aid in it. And it took me so long to get to where I needed to be because I wasn't fully doing my part. And I have to be honest about that. So do your full part to aid in your healing process, y'all. Do your full part. You know, y'all know I'm gonna talk through some things and I'm gonna be long-winded. That's just me. That's just who I am. Um, you know, very, very transparent, open book, open book. So, and I'm going to do everything I need to do to protect me and mine. That's just what it is. But, um, go over into her channel and watch it. I was referred to, and I haven't watched them yet because when you guys send me, when you guys send me, like, videos to watch and all that stuff. I don't click on the links now. I will copy them and go to YouTube and put it in to see if something comes up. So if there's something on YouTube that you want me to watch because you never know what people are sending. You're not saying I don't trust some of you guys, but you never know what's in links. If there's a video you want me to watch, copy the name of it, paste it over to me. I'm going to go look at it. That's how, you know, I open up, you know, her channel. But, um, I'm going to make videos and, and post all kind of information here for you guys to have it and for you guys to see it. To let you know, baby, that you are not alone. Girl, you are not alone. Young man, you are not alone. It's happening. And people like me and people like Boldly Awami are getting more comfortable and have gotten comfortable with speaking their truth you know people like you know the young women that told their stories on her channel they're getting comfortable with with, with telling the truth and not be bullied into silence so don't be bullied into silence come out speak your truth speak your truth speak your truth because it's not going to stop happening if we don't speak up about it and you can't be afraid. You can't be afraid, you know, of the threats. You can't allow yourself to be bullied. Just speak your truth. No one can speak your truth the way that you can speak your truth. And no one can tell you that you were not allowed to speak your truth. No one can tell you that. So I'm going to always put information here, guys. I'm going to always put it here. When I find it, I'm going to put it here for you. And we're going to keep going. And we're going to keep focusing on us. We're going to focus on us. And we're going to keep that healing train going. And we're going to keep those blessings going. And we're going to keep taking care of our families. And we're going to keep taking care of our children. And we're going to keep thriving. Our children are going to keep thriving. Everything we touch is going to keep thriving. Everything we manifest is coming. It's coming. Pray over it. Don't worry about it and let God do the rest, guys. That's what we're going to do. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. And watch what comes out of it. So, guys, that's this video. Thank you. Thank you, guys, so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I love you guys to life. I love you guys to pieces. Don't forget to always pray. Put God first. Love on those who love you back. 
and I will definitely see you in the next episode, guys.